Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. And welcome to That's English. Hello. The American melting pot. Estados Unidos, un crisol de razas. That's the title of today's programme. The United States has an extraordinary mixture of people. People of every nationality, race and religion. And they all mix together in a big melting pot. Marco, one of our friends in the pub, has an American cousin called Maria. Recently, she visited him with her new boyfriend. Maria thinks her boyfriend is good-looking. Here's our question for you. Why is Eric so good-looking? Cheers! To the weekend! To the weekend! It has to be better than last weekend. Why? What happened last weekend? My American cousin and her boyfriend had invited themselves to stay. From the moment they arrived, it was a disaster. Are you American, Eric? Well, he's a mix of different ethnic American groups. Isn't he cute? Maria. You know, Eric is English, Dutch, German, African, and Irish. Isn't that right, Eric? That's about it. Oh, there's French as well. But his racial groups are white, black, and Cherokee. That's why he's so beautiful. Honey, do you have to talk like that? And his religious groups are Catholic and at least five types of Protestant. And some of my cousins are Jewish. Oh, yes. And he has some Jewish cousins. I just said that, honey. And one of his cousins has married a Puerto Rican. But we weren't invited to the wedding, were we, honey? No. Would you like an olive or lemon in your martini? We'd love an olive, wouldn't we, honey? Yeah, an olive will be fine. Isn't he cute? Can you see the Cherokee bone structure? Yes. You look at his face carefully. Cherokee blood. There's ancient wisdom there, somewhere. Isn't that right, honey? Sure. You know, Eric's first ancestor to go to the New World was Dutch. It was a big mistake to ask him if he was American. She didn't stop talking. And he hardly said a word. <laughs> I didn't think that Americans were shy. Well, he was shy. So she thought she had to talk even more. An hour later, she was still telling me about the Jewish cousins. <laughs> she does talk a lot, doesn't she? Yes, and Marco obviously isn't very interested in the Jewish cousins. But I find it very interesting, that mixture of nationalities and races. Do you think Eric is good-looking, Vanessa? Mm, good-looking? I'm not so sure. Did you spot the answer to our question? Why is Eric so good-looking? But his racial groups are white, black and Cherokee. That's why he's so beautiful. His racial groups are white, black and Cherokee. Can you see the Cherokee bone structure? Can you see the Cherokee bone structure? ¿Ves qué rasgos tan típicos de indio Cherokee tiene? Now, it wasn't just Eric's ethnic background that interested Maria. She also talked about the mixture of nationalities in his background. No, Eric is English, Dutch, German, African and Irish. 
Isn't that right, Eric? That's about it. Oh, there's French as well. Lots of different nationalities there. Well, Spanish was probably the only nationality that Eric didn't have in his background. It was. So, let's go back to the story. Marco says that the American melting pot is like... what? Let's find out. It was a big mistake to ask him if he was American. She didn't stop talking, and he hardly said a word. <laughs> I didn't think that Americans were shy. Well, he was shy, so she thought she had to talk even more. An hour later, she was still telling me about the Jewish cousins. <laughs> so, Eric, how is your trip going? England's nice. Well, it's a really nice place to visit, but it seems slow. After New York, anywhere seems slow, doesn't it, honey? Yeah. Marco, you must come and visit us in New York. You would love it. It's just like being in Italy. Yes. I'll have to visit you one day. You don't have to sleep at night. There is always something happening in New York, isn't there, honey? Yeah. Yeah, and Eric always says the food in New York is the best. There are so many different foods. You just have to come and see for yourself. Yeah. It's the most multicultural city in the world. In New York, you've got the Chinese in Chinatown, the Italians in Little Italy, then you've got the Latin Americans in the barrio. But do all those different cultures complement each other? What do you mean? With a good soup, all the ingredients have to blend together. You mustn't have olive oil on the bottom, then the onions, then the tomatoes, and then garlic on top. It's not good that way. The soup tastes terrible. It sure does. They call America the melting pot. But as long as people live in ghettos, there will always be problems. Hey, Marco, what do you think of Eric? Isn't he wonderful? <laughs> Don't you just love him? <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. What do you think? Should Eric and I get married? Well... Oh, come on, tell me the truth. The truth? Some people prefer an olive in a martini cocktail, but I prefer lemon. Lemon complements the martini perfectly. I love lemon. Lemon with chicken can be wonderful. Lemon is beautiful. But you mustn't put lemon juice in this soup. It will taste terrible. What are you saying? I'm saying that some people are suited to each other. Eric and I. Maria, do you love him? He's a really nice man. Yes, but do you love him? I know he doesn't talk much, but he's very intelligent. Yes, but do you love him? You must admit he's handsome. Sure, he's handsome. But Maria, tell me, do you love him? When we first met, I thought I was in love with him. But I'm not sure anymore. Sounds like a difficult weekend. Yes. Eric and Maria both knew in their hearts that their relationship had finished. That's sad. No, it was OK. On Sunday night, we had a few martinis, and they agreed to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> so are you doing any marriage guidance counselling this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Did you understand Jilly's joke at the end? Are you doing any marriage guidance counselling this weekend? ¿Vas a dar consejos matrimoniales este fin de semana? And did you notice Marco's description of the American melting pot? He compared it to... soup. With a good soup, 
All the ingredients have to blend together. You mustn't have olive oil on the bottom, then the onions, then the tomatoes, and then garlic on top. It's not good that way. The soup tastes terrible. It sure does. They call America the melting pot. But as long as people live in ghettos, there will always be problems. With a good soup, all the ingredients have to blend together. Mezclarse. Have to. Must and mustn't. Eric, Marco and Maria use these a lot in their conversation. Estos verbos se suelen utilizar para expresar obligación o prohibición. With a good soup, all the ingredients have to blend together. With a good soup, all the ingredients have to blend together. En este caso, Marco está expresando obligación. También podría haber dicho... With a good soup, all the ingredients must blend together. Have to and must. In that example, they have the same meaning. Now look at this sentence. You mustn't have olive oil on the bottom. Mustn't is short for must not. You use it to tell someone not to do something. Para prohibirles hacer algo. Tony, by the way, you mustn't be late for work again tomorrow. Please, Vanessa, you mustn't tell everyone. OK, sorry. You don't have to look so angry. I'm not, really. But that reminds me. Do you remember something Maria said to Marco? You don't have to sleep at night. She's telling Marco that it's not necessary to sleep at night in New York. There's so much to do. You don't have to sleep at night means no es necesario dormir de noche. You don't have to if you don't want to. Or she could have said you needn't sleep at night. It means the same as don't have to. No es necesario. For example, Vanessa, do you have to go home after the programme? No, I don't have to. I needn't. Why do you ask? Well, would you like to come out to lunch with me? You needn't pay. Well, that's very nice. But I have to go and get changed first. No, you look great. You needn't do that. Are you sure I don't have to? Are we going to an expensive restaurant? Well, we don't have to, do we? No, of course we don't. But look at the time. We have to finish. We must. Yes, but you needn't finish learning English now. To practice, why don't you think of some things that you must do today? Some things that you mustn't do today. Some things that you needn't do today. You can do them tomorrow. Remember, you have to say them out loud and in English. Bye. Come on, Tony. We must go. We mustn't be late for the restaurant. Come on. Bye.